Obi-Wan Kenobi has reaffirmed something that I thought for a long time with regard to Wheel of Time and Halo, that the writer's own arrogance gets in the way of the plot, and that's one of the destructive forces upon it. They think that they can go back in time and either fix problems with the original story or improve upon it, because the original story wasn't good enough. It needed more information. It needed to be added to. The property that everybody loved wasn't good enough originally, and so they have to come in and fix it. And that's one of the main takeaways from this article, which talks about Leia. Obi-Wan Kenobi is awful for many reasons. The writing quality, for instance, just isn't very good. But the two standout characters that are really bizarre in this series are Leia and Reva. And there's a lot of information about Leia and why she was added into the piece in this article. The writer says he was relieved that Leia was kept a secret. Largely because if they were revealed, people probably wouldn't have even watched the premiere. And even the article itself immediately compares it to Grogu. You know, Baby Yoda from The Mandalorian. Disney certainly has some weird obsession with this babysitter role that goes on. I think it just gives them a very easy way of constructing a story, which doesn't really have much of a story. It's just, hi, here's something that needs looking after. Now look after it. Oh, you're really supposed to just care about this character because it's a child. We're not going to give you any reason to care about them. We're just going to assume that you should. Now, for me, Obi-Wan Kenobi's story should obviously have been about him protecting Luke. He should have done it from the shadows. Luke never should have come into contact with him. But something could have gone on that would have threatened Luke, and Obi-Wan Kenobi sorted it out from the shadows. I think that could have been an interesting six-episode miniseries. It's not a multi-series piece, but not a lot of things happened in this series. But this story wasn't written from what should happen. They didn't care about fitting into canon. They cared about putting their characters into Obi-Wan Kenobi's story. That's how you end up with Leia and Reva. That's why they were relieved that it was kept a secret. Because everybody knows it should have been about Luke, but that's not the story they wanted to tell. For Disney, crowbarring Leia in there by any way possible was all the more important. That's how we get post-hoc rationalizations about how, no, Leia really contributed to the story. Harold wholeheartedly believes that Leia's plea for help makes all the more sense. I mean, I'm sure he does, but unfortunately for him, reality doesn't care about what he believes. He can say, it answers the question of why him? So, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope feels less arbitrary as a choice and a decision now because of the depth of history that they have together. Oh yeah, that depth of history. That must be the depth of history which has sites just scrambling to even try and explain how any of this is physically possible. CBR being one of the people to report the reason this, the reason why Leia doesn't remember him, because she clearly doesn't know who he is in those movies, despite what Harold believes, is that obviously Obi-Wan Kenobi must have wiped her entire mind, because everybody knows that he doesn't know her in the original trilogy, so you're going to have to do something. That's also what I thought they were going to do, because there could be no other canonical reason for it. And they're so busy saying they would never break canon. Canon is everything that surely they're going to wipe her mind. They would have to if they cared, but this interview just proves that they don't. He genuinely thinks, wholeheartedly believes, that this helped reinforce and better articulate a little piece of the jigsaw that's already in place. That's where the arrogance begins to appear to him, Star Wars isn't a holistic piece. It doesn't tell a complete story. No, it's simply a jigsaw. There's actually holes all over it, which he thinks, I can go in here and fill it with something, change it. I could put myself in the jigsaw and improve it, reinforce it, better articulate it than the original work. You know that work, the work which everybody enjoys. I know that this is one of the biggest IPs in all of history, but don't you know, this writer can obviously improve upon it. And he takes a very interesting piece when it comes to not breaking canon. Because this isn't an idea of, should this series be created? Is there a reason for this series to be created? No, this is simply about, is there any reason why we shouldn't do it? As proven by their part three, where he talks about Darth Vader and Obi-Wan fighting. Where he says, there's no line in A New Hope that said we couldn't. We weren't prevented by doing it. No one forced me not to write it. And so I wanted to do it. Why? Because it allows him to put himself in Star Wars, in the prequels. Lead up to those moments. Use characters that people love to make them actually watch a piece of his work that they wouldn't have cared about if he'd just written something on his own. He says, there's nothing that I feel we've violated at all. If anything... We've informed those scenes so that some of the choices we've taken for granted actually make more sense. Oh, he's out here and proving it. Obi-Wan Kenobi is just enhancing the series. Despite the fact that everyone was very comfortable before and didn't even need to see this, 
Now, don't worry, he's the one that's actually come in and made all of Star Wars make sense. I hope you're very grateful for it. I mean, so many fans have come out and completely destroyed all of the reasons that he gives for it. In fact, even CBR's coming out and saying that Obi-Wan Kenobi has quite a few plot holes. But no, don't worry, my dude, you're definitely improving something that no one's had problems with for decades. And that arrogance is one of the reasons why prequels are so commonplace right now. It allows writers to get involved in a piece of work which they couldn't create themselves, but get reflected glory from it and then take credit from it. They put their work ahead of the piece that people actually love, not just to get a free audience, but also because it makes them inseparable from the later parts of the work. They can look at the original trilogy and think, yeah, I helped build that. This is why you can feel a sense of smugness coming from a lot of the lines. It was also very present in Wheel of Time and Halo. Pieces of work which were determined to change the original source material, completely annihilate it. But they were so proud of what they replaced it with. And yet all of these pieces of work feel like they're being written for children. And I used to think that was just their target audience, but no, they're definitely aimed at adults. So it's not surprising then when he actually comes out and says this. He says, I hate to be reductive and say it's like playing with Star Wars figures all over again, but it genuinely feels like that. You get pleasure from it. Good writing is done from the point of view as I've got a problem, I've got characters. How would those characters solve that problem? Bad writing is done by the fact that I am controlling the characters. They are me. What can I make them do? This is how you end up with characters that don't actually obey their own characters at all. This is how Obi-Wan can just be destroyed, be a sad guy out in the desert some way, can't even be bothered to train in the Force, so that his only life mission, protecting Luke, is physically impossible for him to do. This is how in the last episode, Darth Vader is suddenly just a benevolent person who's always giving up everyone, and despite the fact that he clearly decided he was going to annihilate Reva, it decided, oh no, you're actually amazing, I should just forgive you and let you lead everything, because, you know, you're probably better than me or something. None of this was in character, because it wasn't the characters acting within their personalities. It was the writer playing with Star Wars figures. And now his entire answer about Vader and Obi-Wan fighting doesn't make sense, and honestly it makes me wonder if we're talking about the same series, because he says that that scene was all about Vader and Anakin under it all, the range and the anger, and articulating that within the sequence. What? The fight was a farce, Obi-Wan was trash, and Vader held back. Where was his range and anger? Where was any of it? He says it's not slug, slug, slug. No, there was literally none of that. It was about finding a moment to understand the depth of the relationship between the two of them. Where exactly did they find that depth? Was it where he was running away like something out of a Benny Hill sketch or a Carry On movie? As I've said before, Scobie Wan Kenobi is a parody, and I have to wonder why. Because the writer is acting as if this is a really serious piece of work. This is an incredible, deep, and complicated piece. So I have to ask, why does it come across like a farce written for two-year-olds? Is it the writer's fault and his inability to actually make anything good? Or is it Kathleen Kennedy's? When you came on board, a batch of scripts were already written. Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy recently described them as too bleak. While there are still plenty of dark elements in these three episodes, you're gonna have to show me those, I'm afraid, was adding some levity one of the tasks you were assigned. And he says, I wasn't given a mandate when I first came in. In Star Wars, there's always a touch of lightness here and there. You see that with Leia. You see that with the tonal balance. George Lucas has said that Star Wars is for kids. And it is fortuitous that he thinks it's for kids because he couldn't write a plot that could challenge a three-year-old. But on the other end, what intrigued me was the weight knowing that was there. Both sides are interesting to me. You could have lightness and still carry the weight of drama. And I've said I thought Obi-Wan felt like a parody. When he's running away from Vader, that was a comedy scene. That was meant to humiliate Ewan McGregor and Obi-Wan Kenobi. The escape in the last episode, walking with multiple people under a trench coat, was intended to humiliate Star Wars and the audience. That was so pathetic he couldn't have even entertained a two-year-old. They would have been there thinking, what on earth are you doing? This is absolutely farcical. But the writer can't even realize that. Because he compares his work to The Empire Strikes Back and says it's intensely dramatic, weighty and mythic. But he also has that amazing likeness. There was this holy grail of tonal comparisons that I had in my mind. He had the holy grail in his mind when he was writing Obi-Wan Kenobi.
Dude, if you think this is the Holy Grail, you've drank from the wrong cup. We're all rapidly aging and are due to die in about 15 seconds. It says, is Leia's brand of sash a pleasure to write as well? I don't care if it's a pleasure to write, it's a horror to witness. He says it's fun to write, and but a little goes a long way. Yes, she should have been maybe in about five seconds in a flashback, and then never in the rest of the series. But you tried to make it seem like she's spirited, and not just grown up writing for a kid. Don't worry, not a single person on Earth will ever ever insinuates that you write like a grown-up. She's pretty sassy, and Carrie Fisher's incarnation of the character does a very good job of showing that she's no one to be trifled with. Yes, and she's an adult, not a ten-year-old who can barely run. Back to CBR, and they're saying Obi-Wan Kenobi proves that Leia was always ready to lead the rebellion. It's definitively proven that Leia was not only a great leader, but she was born to lead the Rebel Alliance. They go back to the past so that they can change the future. Something which was never proven. Something which actually allowed people to grow into a character. No, 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 no. Don't you understand? She's a type B. She's amazing. She was born to be amazing. She was always ready for it. She didn't have to earn it. There was no challenge or arc involved. No, she's a type B. They're born that way. Way better than those pesky men that we're just going to have to humiliate by making them fools. That's why you get this arrogance to go back and do the prequels to affect the future. It's not just me that says it, it's also The Hollywood Reporter. When you invent the past, you also recontextualize the future. How did you reconcile Obi-Wan and Leia's relationship? Nothing in this series was about fitting in within the canon that was already there. To spot a gap and just think, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll make a story there, but it's not going to affect the greater piece. We're not going to try and ruin that or change it, no. The aim here is to recontextualize it, take something which people already love and twist it so it fits what we want it to fit in. That's why if anyone thinks he's going to wipe a mind, this answer just basically says he isn't. He thinks it fits. And so all this talk about how we're never going to break canon is completely annihilated because he doesn't want to. He wants to recontextualize the future. He wants to change how you think about Star Wars. So if you watch all of the stories in a row, you'd be like, oh, of course she's going to Obi-Wan, even though she was never supposed to know who he was. This recontextualization isn't just to boost up the characters that they love pushing, like Leia and Reva. No, it's also to drag down all of those pesky little people that they really hate over at Disney. You know, the, the male Jedi, for instance. Obi-Wan Kenobi reinforces how poor strategy killed off the Jedi. Oh, those strategies were idiots. We don't actually care that they used to advise the universe. No, actually, they're just idiots who were uh, kind of killed themselves off in the end. It was their own stupidity that got them wiped out when you really think about it. Oh, it's the helpless Nari who was just an idiot and got tracked down by the Inquisitors. Oh, if only he'd been Leia, he would have had all of the intelligence he needed to avoid the Sith. Oh yeah, we're over at Disney. We don't just want to lift some people up who don't deserve it. We also want to crush other people, even if they were made decades ago. Oh, and if you're wondering where the writer got some of his inspiration from, it, when he's talking about Reva, he says, I love that Reva is this mystery box. Yes, this is a guy who really is a fan of J.J. Abrams' writing style and the mystery boxes that will probably never get answered. What's in the box? We don't know. Why don't we know? Well, because you won't care when you find out it's crap. I do like how when they're asking about the Grand Inquisitor, you know, the one that they say they won't break canon with, which I think means they'll have to, like, film another scene just to retcon that back to how it should be because they probably didn't realize. He does say, I know there's speculation about that and I won't speak on it, but then uses the past tense of I love what he did with that character. It's the difference between someone telling to me they like my videos or saying they liked my videos. The latter comes with a certain implication. And that is where he says there's no line in New Hope that said we couldn't. There's nothing wrong with uncovering the past and its truth and storytelling. So I've never felt it wrong to me. You see, everyone's idea before this was wrong. Only he could come in, you know, the Star Wars master, and truly dig up the past and uncover the truth. I mean, the truth never existed until he came and wrote it, but he had the true Star Wars narrative just hidden in his mind, flooding out onto the page. You may have not known that actually Star Wars was a parody of trash all along, but this writer certainly came and uncovered that truth, according to him. This truth of his, which could also be called a perversion of the IP is how you end up with all the plot holes, how you end up with characters that were super strong when they were 10 year olds, but for some reason get really weak when they're adults. This is how Leia is suddenly actually amazing at the Force, the reason why Reva's Force power didn't work on her, which according to Screen Rant is perhaps one of the best moments in the entire episode. 
which I thought was, quite frankly, the most boring. <laughs> I'm telling you, the best actor out of that entire scene was the Stormtrooper, and that's because he stood in a corner, kept his mouth shut, and didn't say anything. So there's this, actually, Leia's sassy quip in the middle should have alerted the third sister that was something particularly powerful about Leia. And what is it? What is this secret power which Leia has? It's actually that she's incredibly strong-willed as a young princess, and she can just block Reva's attempt to get inside her mind, because she's also inherently strong in the Force. You know, that inherent strong in the Force, the thing which didn't even really rear its head in the original trilogy. No, what we have in Obi-Wan Kenobi, despite all of their cries about how canon is everything and they'd never break it, and their arrogant pontificating about how they had the Holy Grail in their mind as they wrote it, what we end up with is simply somebody who thinks Star Wars is for kids, and who writes at a level beneath that. An entire series without an actual story to it. Leia's been kidnapped. Oh hey, are we gonna move on at any point? We've got dialogue with lines that don't even have anything to do with the line that came before, and we've got stupid, ridiculous, farcical parody set pieces in it, which make Obi-Wan look more like an episode of Spaceballs than Star Wars. Not only is Obi-Wan Kenobi being humiliated running away from Vader, but that entire pathetic scene with multiple people hiding in a trench coat when they're walking past various different security isn't something that was put in there for kids. It was put in there for adults with the mind of children. Kathleen Kennedy. Those things are too bleak. You're gonna have to put in some comedy for me. I don't think you missed the main part of comedy, my dude. It, it, it's meant to be funny. No amount of tonal balance is going to save you from this one. What you have created as a writer is something which is awful, pathetic, and cannot be saved. I have no idea why you were brought in when there was already a batch of scripts already written. I don't know how much of those scripts you saved, whether you were trying to patch over the cracks when they should have been done from scratch, or whether just as a writer yourself, you also can't do anything of any quality. What I do know is that Obi-Wan isn't something of any quality. <laughs> and the more people try and defend it and come up with the reasons of why it's a trash fire, the worse it sounds. The more you try and reaffirm that, oh no, it's actually great, don't worry, we've all done this deliberately, the worse it sounds. And I can only imagine that that is exactly why, before it came out, you were already attacking the fans, trying to shut them up, trying to make a narrative that actually it's the fans which are at the problem. Not the show, not the show, because I don't actually believe anything you've said in this. I don't believe that you had the Holy Grail in mind or that you think that this is any good. I think you know exactly what it is. That became clear when you said it was for kids. When you say something to kids, what you actually mean is, this is childish, it's pathetic, it's badly written, and it could only actually entertain somebody whose brain isn't developed yet. And at the end of the day, the reason you were happy that Leia was kept a secret is because you knew exactly what you'd done. You knew the problems that you created, and you just didn't care. You were relieved because you were like a child with his hand in the cookie jar. You were relieved that you hadn't got caught until it was too late for anyone to do anything about it. But those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe, more videos in the future. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.